Good morning. Kaiser Henry Baum. Good evening, Bavarian. <laughs> I want to welcome you all today to uh, the rededication of the Cross Mafia locomotive, the SP9010. It's been an 11 year labor of love uh, for the Pacific Locomotive Association and specifically for. Uh, a group of dedicated volunteers who have spent their their lives with with one thought in mind and that's having this locomotive be all that it could be when we first started this project our intention was to do a cosmetic restoration and we have accomplished that right but we've gone beyond that as well and while the locomotive isn't going to be running under its own power today, uh, it's not because it can't, it's because it shouldn't, right? There's, we discovered some issues with the engine and we decided that it would be better to fix it before we wreck it. So we're not going to, to run the engine until it's been repaired. A little bit of a disappointment, but still far beyond what we ever expected to do this project. I'd like to bring a few people up here. Uh, first, the one running away, Howard Wise. <laughs> Howard Wise is the project leader on this, but I also want to bring up Joe Kinnaman. And his man, where he disappeared to. Back there. Jerry, Jerry Feeney, Rob Fern. Rob Fern came all the way from England. Uh, he's our Maybach Master Meister. And uh, so these are, these are the basic group of people who've been working on this project since it began. And there's been hundreds of other volunteers, uh, but this really is the Group. Bill has done all the machining of the parts that didn't exist, uh, and Howard has been, you know, just cheerleading this effort uh, from the beginning. Howard's never cheerful, so you know, but he cheerleads anyway. Uh, but this has been an, uh, just a fantastic opportunity for the railroad. Uh, it has given us worldwide attention. Uh, far beyond anything we ever expected or desired. Uh, so we really want today to celebrate all their efforts and their work right, and really show the world what the Pacific Locomotive Association is capable of doing and uh, the things we do in love. So once again, a round of applause for our volunteers. built uh, in Munich, right? we have today uh, Nadine Stillman, who her family was, was sent over to Munich by the Southern Pacific Railroad, and uh, so she spent her teenage years <laughs> in, in Bavaria, four months, in her teenage years, grow up fast. Uh, but you know, she brought some materials that we're going to set up in the commissary card for you to look at, uh, historical documents, some family photos, some things. Uh, as part of our uh, rededication, I've also asked the Dean if she would be willing to uh, help us by doing a Christmas ceremony of drinking uh, a bottle of champagne over the coupler. Right. Luckily, none of the ship mists or anything to apply here, but doesn't break on the first time. Bad things are not going to happen. You just never know how tough that bottle is going to be. So, uh, you know, 
we'll give that a shot. But even before we do that, I did want to ask Scott Inman to come up and uh, say a few words. Scott is uh, president of the Southern Pacific Historical and Technical Society. And uh, he's, he's here to talk about the locomotive. Thank you. Uh, I'll try and speak with my teacher's voice this morning. But uh, good morning, and let me begin by thanking uh, Mr. Baum and the dedicated volunteers here of the uh, Pacific Locomotive Association and the Niles Canyon Railway for inviting me to say a few words today. It's a humble privilege to serve as an ambassador for the preservation of Southern Pacific equipment, artifacts, and ephemera. Now you see, I was a fairly new and young docent at the California State Railroad Museum in 2006 when a handful of volunteers and paid staff members examined a forlorn and neglected former locomotive that at that time we simply called the camera car. SP had used the car body and frame of this machine as a tool for recording simulator training films before being donated our museum in Sacramento. And at that time, I could not even quote the engine's delivered road number as SP9010 or tell you the more remarkable story of its survival. What we saw was collection tarnish and perhaps something that resembled a recently submerged hole. The decision we recommended was for the museum to offer America's only surviving cross copy to another entity knowing full well it may be likely traded in for salvage or for another more practical artifact. Some time went by when I heard a rumor of a 16-year-old member of the Pacific Locomotive Association named Charles Grant, who petitioned the organization to save the Krauss Mafia, even if only for the significance of telling its story or giving it a presentable cosmetic restoration. Then began what ultimately became a worldwide effort to initiate and energize and campaign for the restoration of an artifact that was believed to be analogous to the difficulty of putting a man on the moon. Rather fitting for today's 50th anniversary of that very achievement. And in the worldwide scope of internal combustion restoration, it's a worthy comparison of chassis 19106 that we know and love as SP9010. What we had to begin with was one rail fan publication in a series of books on Southern Pacific historic diesels. And Mr. Joe Straypack is here today to see his efforts to promote the history of Southern Pacific's diesel hydraulic experiment. suited to lead this project began without any available blueprints, electrical diagrams, or even a domestic manufacturer to lead. Well, no story of this German import would be complete without credit to a man who is admired in the community of rail preservation beyond the level that his humble nature would have been. He has challenged odds and overcome obstacles and re-engineered this machine to breathe life once again. No doubt that a natural born leader to take on this unprecedented restoration. We're grateful today to recognize the accomplishments of crew chief Mr. Howard Watson. It was almost as if this locomotive and project attracted supporters on its own as each piece of newly fabricated steel was installed, cab interior work completed, or a piece that was salvaged from scrap decades before arrived to be reinstalled. It was not long before some of Krauss Mafi Munchen's former employees heard the news around the globe. And through the public relations outreach and social media campaign led by author and supporter Bob Zink, the word began to spread around the globe. Correspondence and documentation and first-hand accounts relating to the saga of Southern Pacific's higher horsepower playbook began to emerge from Germany, courtesy of Mr. Richard Ode, 
son of lead project engineer for Krauss Mountain's MR 4000 CC locomotive development. Without the support of Richard and the international support of Mr. Rob Fern of the United Kingdom, we may never have learned that a set of original trucks for this engine existed in France, complete with necessary gearbox, gearboxes long discarded from 1910. Custom-built ballast regulator existed on a scrap line, almost as if fate had it to wait for its trucks to be reunited with this restoration campaign before the torch was taken. Through the efforts of a multi-organizational fundraising and international delegation, the last usable trucks and gearboxes came home to America in 2014. This was the game changer that led Howard to believe 9010 could one day be restored to operate his own power. New cars and shafts were built, acquired, and installed, all the while rust removal and cosmetic painting was being simultaneously completed in favor. Now today represents a legacy of 11 years of determination, learning, synergy, and most importantly, historic preservation. The work displayed here today will benefit all who learn about this German-American immigrant who survived against all odds time and time again. 9010 is a machine that possesses an almost human-like desire to live. Everyone here today and the entire community of railroad preservation and even legacy companies of Krauss Mafia are better as a result of your hard work, dedication, and trusted spirit. Quite amazing to think that just a few miles from the spot where 9010 almost met its fate in Sacramento, successor company Siemens is today building new engines. I'm proud that my hometown of Sacramento has a rich legacy of locomotive development and construction that has now reached a 150-year milestone itself. This just goes to prove SP9010 has a greater story to tell and one that will benefit future generations to learn of this remarkable story. So please accept my heartfelt congratulations on this achievement and thank you very much. Yeah. 